Welcome to Understanding Heart Failure. This is part one. This is going to be a three-part video series. Part one is going to be the basic overview of heart failure and what it is. Part two is going to be about diagnosing heart failure. And part three will be all about managing heart failure. You can find this one on pages 104 and 105 of your nurse workbook 2.0. You can print the pages below me so you can follow along as well or always come back and test your knowledge. The purpose of this video is intended to give you additional education beyond the nurse workbook, but provide do with real world nursing education as well. So heart failure is increasingly common in the healthcare system today. There are over 7 million Americans with heart failure. And so this is going to be coming into your clinical practice often if you are at the bedside. Additionally, heart failure is a very multi-complex kind of condition. And it takes a lot of understanding from not just the healthcare provider, but the patient as well, because the whole purpose of treating heart failure is going to be slowing the progression of it down. And the only way we can do this is if the patient's on board along with our multidisciplinary team to treat heart failure. So what exactly is it? Well, first we're gonna go basic. So the heart is a pump and our blood comes into our heart, our blood goes out of our heart. So we're gonna think of this much like a highway. If we have cars merging into the highway are also going to be merging out of the highway. But if there's any road work and there's any construction going on, our cars are going to slowly pass and our traffic is gonna to start to back up. So this is much like heart failure. So congestive heart failure, CHF, is when the heart muscle is damaged from conditions such as mitral or tricuspid valve disorders, any hypotrophic disorders, and dilated cardiomyopathy. So the heart can hypertrophy or dilate to compensate for an increased workload. So this is saying the heart muscle can grow or the heart can even dilate because it's compensating for working so hard. So just like going to the gym, working out and flexing that bicep, that muscle is going to get bigger. So the muscle is hypertrophying. So the heart is no different. It could do the same thing. And this will result in a weak or stiff heart that cannot fill and pump blood efficiently. So let's look at the two ways that congestive heart failure occurs. And this is something that not a lot of people understand. They think of heart failure as just the backing up of fluid, but there's two ways that our heart can come into heart failure. So we can have our difficulty to fill. And what this means is that the walls are stiff and thick. So these chambers are lacking room for blood to fill up. There's inadequate ejection. So stiff and thick. So looking at our ventricle walls here, we could see that these ventricular walls are super big and enlarged. They're hypertrophied. So there's not a lot of extra room inside of here because the muscle has grown so much. Additionally, because they're so much bigger, this is what makes that stiff and thick. And since there's less room to fill up, it's going to have a lot harder time squeezing out. Because of this, we're gonna see that backing up of our blood and that small output. We also have our difficulty to pump. So what this means is there are thin and stretched wall chambers, and this makes a really poor efficiency for pumping blood out. So we have thin, and stretched. So right here, if we look at the chambers of our heart, they're very, very thin because they've been stretched out so much from all of this blood backing up and accumulating. Again, we have our blood backing out and once again, small output. So not enough forward flow of blood means our blood is going to back up. And one of the ways that we're gonna test for heart failure through blood work is by doing something called a BNP. So this is a B-type natriuretic peptide. This is a hormone that's gonna be released in response to cardiac muscle stretching. And a normal BMP, we should see less than 100. A BMP that's between 100 and 300 can suggest heart failure is potentially present. But I say potential because there are things that can affect this BNP level. And a high BMP 
is going to be anything greater than 400. So at our 400 level, we consider this a mild, moderate heart failure. But if we see this level above 900, this is a medical emergency and we really need to treat this moment. This is indicative of severe heart failure. This concludes part one of heart failure and I will see you in lesson two of heart failure. Thank you.